Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We are at quite an exciting weekend of the summer with the Travers right around the corner, and I will get to see you up at the spa for the first time in a whole bunch of years. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Matt. Heading out for the Travers. I'll be hitting the road today, so I will see you soon. But let's get right to these big races. Uh, five grade one races on Saturday, one grade one race on Friday. Idiomatic randomized leads to personal ensign. That's not that, but five in a row on Saturday. Of course, we're going to start with the Travers. We've been looking forward to this race, Matt, and we're getting what we wanted. I am calling this the race of the year. It's got a little bit of everything starting with the superstar Philly on the rail. Torpedo Anna in the Travers, Matt. I've seen some people say, no, she should stick with the Phillies. Personally, I'm happy to see her take that challenge and run in the Travers. Yeah, I think at this point I feel that way also, Brian. Uh, she just, you know, overwhelmed the other three-year-old Phillies in all four of her races this year. Uh, there, there really is no competition in that division for her. There's no downside. This is only a win-win situation for uh, uh, Torpedo Anna as far as I see. Yeah, four uh, big races, four dominant wins, the last three grade ones. Uh, the horses she's been just beating up easily, Candied. She had trouble at the start, and she beat Candied for fun in the Coaching Club American Oaks. And Power Squeeze. Power Squeeze has won five stakes races this year. She was well beaten by Torpedo Anna in her two others. And those were the two that came down to the wire together in the Alabama. Torpedo Anna, you're exactly right. She has no competition among three-year-old fillies. This is a big test. She's on the rail. What do you think of the rail draw, Matt? Um, I don't know, Brian. You know, uh, you know, I'm not a big uh, post position guy, uh, Brian, uh, particularly in a field of eight. Uh, when you've got horses of this quality, they should be able to deal with it. I agree with you, Matt. Uh, yeah, I saw some people negative about the rail draw, but I, I don't think so. It, it, there's only eight horses in here. There are horses with very little speed. Uh, one of them, namely right to her outside. I think she should get a good trip uh, on the rail with uh, BJ Hernandez Jr. there. Torpedo Anna certainly has a big shot against the males in the Travers. Another horse with a big shot is number two, Sierra Leone. A horse devoid of much speed, Matt, but this Sonic Gun Runner keeps running good races. He won the Grade Two uh, Risen Star, a, a strong vision of the addition of the Risen Star early this year. He won the Bluegrass of Keeneland. He hasn't gotten there in the Kentucky Derby, the Belmont, and the Jim Dandy, but uh, I, I still have to respect Sierra Leone. You've got to uh, those, you know, those top three finishes were. Uh, in three very good races against uh, very good fields. He's won over $2 million already in his career. The increased distance to 10 furlongs should be to his liking. You know, on the other side, I'm not sure why I should think that he's going to be able to come up with a winning move in this even tougher field. Yeah, it, it could be a tougher field. I mean, I called it the race of the year, so I, I guess I have to agree with you there. But I tell you what, uh, with speed together on the outside and, and some other speed in the race, uh, Sierra Leone should get a good trip, uh, should get a good pace to run at. I know he's been 0 for 2 at a mile and a quarter, huge races, the Kentucky Derby and the Belmont, but he wasn't far off in either one. And I think that Belmont uh, day was uh, certainly favoring speed. Now, it could be favoring speed again here for the Travers, but uh, I still think there's a lot to like with Sierra Leone, Matt. Number three is another Chad Brown. Just like Sierra Leone, uh, unmatched wisdom comes from us from the barn of Chad Brown. Uh, I, I guess the old phrase is he's done nothing wrong. He's undefeated in three starts, Matt, including a nice win over the track last time in the Curlin Stakes. Yeah, and you know, and and uh, he only started his career uh, 
back in May, so lightly raced, and those races coming in rapid fire, which I, I which I think is a good thing. He he's got to be in in top form here. Um, hey, that Coralina was a restricted stake for horses that have never have won a uh, stakes race. I think in this uh, in this year. Um, and now he's going in a grade one against these kind of horses. Hey, I saw some comments that I thought were a little silly about how Chad Brown is entering this horse uh, as a rabbit. Uh, I don't think so. Chad Brown's entering this horse because this is a darn good horse with uh, uh, a different ownership. So uh, he's, you know, uh, taking a shot to get his first Travers win, Chad Brown is, with two horses. Yeah, he's 0 for 15 lifetime in the Travers mount. So uh, uh, Chad Brown wants to get his first Travers badly, and he's got two horses. Yeah, different ownership. Uh, unmatched wisdom is in to run his best race. Uh, interestingly, I read Ortiz Jr., the leading rider at Saratoga, will hop aboard. Flavian Pratt uh, picked Sierra Leone over unmatched wisdom in this one. Matt, I think there's a bunch of interesting long shots in the race, and let's start with the number four, Corporate Power. Uh, Shug McGahey, Javier Castellano. Speaking of uh, uh, Travers, they are connections that have done very well in the Travers over the, over the years. Corporate Power is a very well-bred son of uh, Curlin. You ask me who wants 10 furlongs, this horse is high on the list. Corporate Power coming in off uh, second last time to Unmatched Wisdom. Yes, and, and uh, I guess a little similarity there with... Uh with unmatched wisdom that uh, uh, he was running in that restricted curling and he got a victory in his prior race, Corporate Power did, in another one of those restricted states, the Sir Barton at Pimlico during uh, Preakness weekend. I I'll expand a little bit more about your reference for uh, uh, Javier Castellano, who holds the record with uh, seven, seven, Brian, wins in the Travers. Um, I think those seven have come in a short amount of time since 2006. And Shug McGahey has four prior wins, which I think ties him for the most for any trainer. Uh, his go back to 1989 with one of your favorite horses, Brian, easy goer. Shug McGahey has actually won more uh, Traverse Stakes editions than any of the other uh, trainers in the race combined none of the others have more than three combined and shug has four javier the leading travers rider just won the 10 furlong alabama on saturday so interesting connections there for corporate power a horse who i think is getting better and better still learning and uh unmatched wisdom had the run of the race last time in the curl and corporate power might uh uh, have things more to his liking in the setup here. Another interesting long shot, another well-bred horse, another top trainer, Batten Down, uh, son of Tappet for trainer Bill Mott. Uh, faded just a little bit that late down the stretch of the Jim Dandy, but that was his first try against the big boys. Batten Down could be one who, who steps up and improves off that performance uh, last time in the Jim Dandy. I guess he could, Brian, um, but, uh, you know, uh, he is – stepping into uh, a grade one here. He's stepping into uh, a, a much tougher field than uh, he faced uh, in his last race. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens. Trainer Bill Mott, interestingly, has never won the Travers. Yeah, yeah. Surprising, uh, never won the Travers stats for trainer Chad Brown and for trainer Bill Mott. Number six, another Interesting long shot. I sound like a broken record. Anna Marie, though, is a uh, stone cold closer from trainer Whit Beckman. Graded stakes winner as a two year old, had trouble in both the Kentucky Derby, especially, and as well last time when fourth in the Belmont. He comes in a little bit fresher, should get speed, shouldn't mind the mile and a quarter. Anna Marie, Tyler Gaffleon, another long shot you have to at least look at. Yeah, you do. And, you know, trouble sometimes happens when you're a deep closer. And, and that has happened to Honor Marie, who ended uh, uh, his two-year-old campaign with a big victory in the Kentucky Jockey Club, which at that point made him one of the most promising uh, horses in that division. Uh, since then, you mentioned the start, hasn't been able to find the, the winner circle this year. 
talented horse to be a long shot. Yeah, he is a talented horse to be a long shot, and that's how good this field is, Matt. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector now, Matt, and they're saying fast pace. And look at the horses they have out there leading the way on this fast pace. None other than Torpedo Anna, 3-1 to one on the morning line. Seven, Doorknock. We can talk about him a little bit more here in a second. Five to two, morning line favorite. Number eight, Fierceness, the two-year-old champion, co-second choice on the morning line. Three to one, Jim Dandy winner last time. Matt, all three of the favorites on the morning line, time form U.S. pace projector, has them on a fast pace. Yes, Brian. Uh, you know, and, and I, I think that it certainly will not be a slow pace. I think these three all like to be prominently placed, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the jockeys are going to be, tr be trying to avoid a knockdown, drag out uh, speed, speed duel in the early going. Yeah, I, I happen to agree with that, Matt. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a super fast pace, and I don't think it's going to be a three-way battle on the front end. It'll be interesting, by the way, to see if Unmatched Wisdom uses much speed in this race or number five, Batten Down. I think either one of those could be a pace presence as well. So all five of those horses uh, could play a role in the pace. But uh, very interesting out of the starting gate how this unfolds especially when you got Doorknock there in the seven hole, Fierceness in the eight hole, and the Philly Torpedo Anna on the rail. Uh, Doorknock, as I said, the morning line favorite, Matt, probably could say the, the horse to beat coming off, off a Belmont win and a, uh, a win last time in the Haskell. Only one horse in history has won the Belmont and the Haskell and the Travers, by the way. That was point given 23 years ago. Can Doorknock do it? Well, Brian, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, Dornock uh, uh, went into the Belmont Stakes and and, and uh, was not particularly uh, respected in there and, and got the Belmont win. He was a little bit more respected heading to the Haskell, but maybe didn't get the respect that he deserved because, boy, his last two performances have just been flat out, gutsy determined courageous down the stretch he's the kind of horse that you know uh, when a, a horse ranges up outside of him or inside him for that matter uh, 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 he he digs in and does not want to get beat so I, I will confess to maybe not respecting him enough in the Belmont and the Haskell but I'll tell you what that's not going to be the case this time yeah, Doorknock has been nothing but outstanding in those wins in the Belmont and the Haskell. And clearly, going back to uh, uh, the Remsen of last year where he came back again to beat Sierra Leone, he has proven to be a horse who is game, who fights, who wants to get there first. Doorknock, like I said, probably the horse to beat here on paper in the Travers. And, and a slight morning line favorite. I, I don't know that he will be the favorite when they spring the gates uh, but uh, you can see how close they are on the morning line. Doorknock, 5-2. to two. Fierceness, Torpedo, Anna, 3-1. to one. Sierra Leone, 7-2. to two. By the way, those first five are exactly the way that Horse Center predicted when we did our early preview. 5-2, to 3-1, to 3-1, to 7-2, to 8-1. So the morning line odds maker at Saratoga went with our odds, or agreed with our odds, at least here in the Travers. Number eight, of course, is Fierceness. Fierceness, two-year-old champion, runaway winner of the Florida Derby, bombed in the Kentucky Derby, came back with a nice win last time over Sierra Leone, over the track in the Jim Dandy. Yeah, and you know what, Brian? I, I thought that Fierceness in the Jim Dandy looked like a more mature, a little bit more settled horse. And uh, uh, I think if uh, he can continue on that path, uh, he's another horse that you certainly can't discount because when he is on his best, he is very, very good. Best speed figures in the race. Um, however, does he want 10 furlongs? However, does he want another horse like Doorknock right next to him in the starting gate to look him in the eye? That is certainly not proven. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a very interesting first 100 yards out of the starting gate with Doorknock and Fierceness out there 
and the two outside post positions. All right, Matt. Uh, do you do you agree with me? By the way, is is this the race of the year? Is this the one that we've been waiting for? Has it finally come to fruition? And here it is. We're going to see uh, just an outstanding addition of the Great One Travers. Oh no, I agree. I, I I think this is an absolutely terrific race. Uh, uh, the right size field, the right uh, kind of horses in there. Uh, uh, the the top trainers that I spoke to. Uh, uh, last week felt called it the her, the race of the year kenny mcpeak and and danny gargan uh, certainly feel the same way you know it's the end of the saratoga meeting and, and, and we haven't had a race like this you know the kentucky derby is the kentucky derby but you know there's there are so many storylines involved in this year's travers yeah storylines championships on the line the, the 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 super philly facing all the boys the boys with so many different personalities within this race or 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 or, or um coming from different places with impressive records they're all stakes winners it should be a heck of a race a mile and a quarter saratoga 1.25 million grade one the travers is big but how about this h allen jerkins memorial stakes matt this this, this race is not bad either grade one half a million dollars Let's start with the, the number eight, Bookham Dano. Um, Bookham Dano, they finally made their decision this morning, Matt. They are going to run in the Jerkins after also cross-entering him in a half a million dollar race at Charlestown on Friday night. I asked one of the owners and he said to me, Saratoga, it's going to be a war, but Jersey boys don't back down. Okay. I thought that was a, I thought that was a fun a fun quote to tell me, yeah, Bookham Dano is going to be at Saratoga for what is absolutely a loaded grade one race. Oh, it is, Brian. It, this is an interesting uh, interesting field uh, of 11 horses where, again, it's hard to, to throw out any of them. We got horses that were, you know, uh, on the Kentucky Derby Trail, horses that, you know, won big races early in their careers that, are coming back a little bit. We got all kinds of things in here, along with the super speedy uh, uh, Book of Dano. It, did, did 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 the morning line maker at Saratoga get it right? Did they make the right favorite here, Book of Dano, as a lukewarm seven to two favorite in this eleven horse field? Well, I don't know, Brian. I, I feel like that might be a little bit high for Book of Dano, but as a fan of Book of Book of Dano, I'd love to get it seven to two odds yeah and and i'm kind of the other way i i think i think he has a seven to two favorite with all these horses to bet uh it should be at least seven to two because there's six or seven legitimate horses in here to bet but i do think bookham dano is the horse to beat the jersey bred son of buchero uh trained by Derek ryan I think he likes seven furlongs better than any distance. And he has been good in all eight of his starts, including a grade one win over the track. Yeah, that's for sure. But you know what, Brian? He's not the only horse in this field that loves the seven furlong distance. Yeah, and I think the second choice on the morning line falls right into that category, Prince of Monaco. Bob Baffert, Johnny Velasquez, Prince of Monaco, was a uh, a really nice two-year-old, especially around one turn. It's only made one start this year. It came in the grade one Woody Stevens against Bookham Dano, and he got off a little slow, but he was sure finishing fast down the stretch at Saratoga. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, he did get off a little bit slow. How much of a factor that, that played in the finish would Bookham Dano have won anyway? Um, I guess we'll find out uh, in, the, uh, in the Jerkins. Yeah, and, and it'll be interesting to see which of those two is the favorite. I think one of those two will be. But then you got horses like Domestic Product, 9-2 to two on the morning line. Flavian Prod had his uh, choice of several horses in the race, and he said, give me Domestic Product, Matt. Domestic Product coming off a big one-turn win in the Dwyer last time. Yeah, you know, and before the Dwyer, I had heard talk that, you know, uh, you know, a lot of a number of racing experts saying that they felt like uh, with all the promise that a domestic product had shown that maybe he was a better horse uh, going one turn. So they tried him out in uh, 
in the Dwyer um, uh, going a one-turn mile, and, and he just blew away that field. Maybe that's an indication that, uh, yeah, they were right. And now um, I would think that the cutback uh, to uh, the seven furlongs has just got to be a real positive for him. Yeah, it, it, it's a positive. Uh, he's just on a practical joke, and practical jokes are almost best, always best, rallying at one turn. They they love seven furlongs. They love a mile, and I think domestic product is proving to be another one of those practical jokes who's best rallying at extended sprints. Uh, domestic product fits in this race. I don't think he beat much in the Dwyer, but uh, yeah, certainly a threat off of that fast mile at Aqueduct. The three horses we've talked about so far, Bookham Dano, the eight, Prince of Monaco, the five, and three, Domestic Product, are all mid or farther back here in this pace projector from Timeform US. They are saying a fast pace, no surprise there, an 11-horse grade one, seven furlong race at Saratoga. But uh, interesting that Domestic Product, well back. Uh, Bookham Dano kind of there in the middle, and uh, behind him is five, Prince of Monaco, um, it, it, it strikes me that this race could go one of two ways where there's too much speed and they go too fast or, or one horse is just a little bit faster, doesn't have to work super hard and goes all the way around the track. Yeah. I, that sounds like two scenarios. Uh, um, uh, it says fast pace. And, and this is a race where I do expect that the early pace is going to be a very fast pace so we'll see uh how many horses are out there doing it i don't expect one horse to be out loose though yeah and, and that's where you and i may differ because i i do feel like the one world record world record is an improving son of a uh, gun runner for uh, trainer rudolph Brissett, and uh he ran so fast early last time he's getting better with every race that was his fourth lifetime race got to saratoga ran so fast to win a graded stakes in smashing style. He draws the rail here. And how many times have we seen big race days where that track is a little souped up and it favors the speed, it favors horses from the inside. I think the one world record is a dangerous horse here, Matt, on the lead. I don't know if anybody else has quite his kind of speed. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, uh, you know, that Amsterdam performance was certainly impressive, certainly visually impressive uh i i i you know do want to note that that was in a very small field of five yeah it wasn't a small field but i think he beat a good horse uh number 10 jefferson street was the favorite that day and jefferson street had run a huge race the day be, uh the, the the start before he's a godolphin runner uh for uh, trainer bill mott and, and i wouldn't throw off jefferson throw out jefferson street off of that loss i think he'll have some nice odds in here Maybe another horse to consider. We haven't talked about Timberlake yet. And Timberlake, of course, is an interesting horse map because he's got a lot of class, a lot of ability, grade one winner, cutting back in distance, which may favor him as well. Yep. Here's another one of those horses that we saw on the uh, Kentucky Derby Trail and, and big, big two turn three year old races. He won the Rebel. He was fourth in the Arkansas Derby. He was third in the Haskell. But now uh, trainer Brad Cox is saying, uh, let's let's cut him back. Let's go one turn and see what happens. He did win the champagne at a mile, one turn as a two year old. Yeah, Timberlake is a classy, talented horse, and, um, you know, it worked for domestic product, granted, against a much easier field. I, I could see a similar uh, favorable uh, outcome for Timberlake here. I, I don't know if that'll be enough to win, but Timberlake certainly a, a classy threat as he cuts back from the nine furlong Haskell to the seven furlong Jerkins Memorial. We haven't talked about Speakeasy yet, Matt. Uh, Speakeasy, I, I don't know if he ends up being a sprinter this son of Constitution trained by Todd Pletcher. But he's run two races so far. They were both sprints, and they were both impressive. Yep, two for two uh, for Todd Pletcher. Uh, certainly the talent is there, but this is a big, big step up, Brian, uh, into this kind of grade one field. Yeah, absolutely. A tough spot for his third race of his life and his second race 
uh, since a layoff. Uh, if anybody goes with the one, like you think will happen, uh, it could be the 11, Little Knee, uh, impressive winner of his first three races, new to the Mark Cassie barn, drawn to the outside. Last time he almost held off uh, Bookham Dano, uh, Monmouth in the Jersey Shore. Yeah, uh, fast, uh, fast horse, Brian. And, and I think that uh, uh, looking at the charts from prior races that uh, uh, some new owners have appeared for little, uh, little nigh, little knee. I'm not sure which one it is, uh, um, which may have precipitated the change to uh, trainer Mark Cassie. This this horse is fast, and he gave Bookham Dano everything that uh, he could in a narrow nose loss at Mama Park. Which was at six furlongs. So now he stretches out of furlong for, again, the new barn, Mark Cassie. Uh, perhaps other speed comes from pretty good long shots in here, Matt. Uh, Vetriano, number four, trainer uh, Brad Cox has this good son of uh, Liam's map, good New York Brits on a Liam's map going well, moving up. Out of the Conqueror has proven to be a very nice horse over a, uh, a career that spanned nine races so far. Might they be up near this early pace? Uh, but, you know, he's uh, a New York Reds got uh, 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 wins in a maiden special weight and allowance, but a total of eleven lengths. Uh, um, I don't know. Could be in the mix early. Yeah, yeah, a a as possibly could Otto the Conqueror, or maybe it's world record. Maybe Little Knee, an interesting, interesting, deep, talented field for this grade one seven furlong race, which is the race before the Travers. So there's a, perhaps a daily double option there for people looking at that. We're going to get to our suggested wagers, but first let's go with our top picks, Matt. We'll start with the Travers and we'll start with you, my friend. Um, yeah, I, I hinted at it a little bit in our rundown. I was guilty of uh, not giving Dornock the kind of respect that he was due, and I'm not going to do it again. Doorknock is my top pick. Doorknock for Matt. Uh, morning line favorite, but again, we don't know if he will be the favorite. It could be the Philly. And I absolutely love the Philly, and I'm on record saying the Philly is the best. I've been with her all year. I'm on record saying she's the best three-year-old in the country, and I, and I do believe it. But it's a tough spot. It is a tough spot for Doorknock. It's a tough spot for Fierceness. It's a tough spot for uh, Torpedo Anna. Um, I, I think she is one of the most likely winners, but Looking at the odds and looking how I how tough I feel this race is, Matt, I had to go for some value. I, I don't want I don't want five to two or three to one. I'm going against the Philly. I'm going against Doorknock. I'm going against Sierra Leone, uh, uh, another horse who I think has a real shot in here. Corporate report for me, uh, fifteen to one on the morning line. I think we get every bit of fifteen to one on race day. And corporate report just looks like a horse who is still learning and really wants to run longer to me. Corporate reports last two races are good enough for me to think if he takes a step forward and there's a really decent pace in here, corporate report is going to be running down the stretch. 15 to one on the morning line. I, I guess I don't mind too much if he runs second, but I'm gonna go with corporate report as my top pick. I'm looking for a long shot in the Travers. Let's go to the Jerkins, Matt. Yeah, in the Jerkins, hey, uh, I liked what the owner of Bookham Dano said. Don't mess with the Jersey bread. And uh, being a Jersey bread myself, I got to go with Bookham Dano. Yeah, it, yeah. It was, it was one of the owners, and, and and he said Jersey boys don't back down. I guess that's basically the same. Bookham Dano, I think, is the horse to beat here. I, like I said, I think he loves seven furlongs, but I just have a feeling. World Report, getting better. Gun runner, speed on the rail, could be a souped up racetrack. World Report is a dangerous horse, and I think he's going to have some decent odds once again here. I'm going for some odds in both of these races, Matt. I'm going with World Report as my top pick in the Allen Jerkins. All right, so we got our top picks. We did our analysis. Let's get some suggested wagers, and we might do this more often. People want to see. Some people want to see. They've told me they want to see more suggested wagers out of us. Let's go with your suggested wagers here on Saturday. 
yeah, we and we tend to save these suggested wagers for big days, and we said that this is one of the biggest. So here we go. I am gonna come up with an all stakes pick five. I've been having a lot of success this uh, this year, including at Saratoga with pick five. So I've got one here with a uh, with a sixty dollar ticket. It starts in race nine. Um, I've got uh, a pair of Charlie Appleby horses that were big winners of their prior races uh, in the Sword Dancer to begin with Measured Time and Silver Knot. I have a single in the ballerina with uh, Vava, who uh, is the winner of her last three races. I'm not one of those big five players that thinks it's a requirement to have a single, but I thought out... Uh, well in uh with that race then in the uh forego i'm gonna spread a bit i've got uh five horses there gun pilot baby yoda mulliken and core cagli ostro hoping that i can get a better price from that and then we get to the races that we uh discussed uh, uh in the show um in the uh in the jerkins, I'm using domestic product, Prince of Monaco, Bookham Dano, and I'll end with the top four. Those top four grade one winning three-year-olds in the Travers, Thorpedo Anna, Sierra Leone, Dornock, and Fierceness. $60 of fun. Good, good luck, Matt. I, I hope you get uh I hope you get that pick five uh with uh, uh, a little bit of price here and there. Uh, for me, the uh, these are all grade one races, by the way. For me, uh, the, the sword dancer boils down to not who's going to win, but which Applebee is going to win. So I expect you to be alive through that. Vava, clearly the horse to beat in the grade one uh, ballerina. Although if the play, if the track is playing fair and there is some rally ability on this track Saturday at Saratoga, Chi-Town Lady as, as a bomb in the ballerina is someone I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, a wide open uh, forego, and you spread it a little bit. I'd like to see Cagliostro drop down well at seven furlongs. And then, of course, you got some big ones there in the last two. Here's what I did, Matt. Um, I, I went a little simpler. Uh, I, I, I think world record can get it done on the front end, which is not my usual MO, but um, this horse... This horse seems to be coming up to the race really good. And I, I think he might just go wire to wire. So $10 daily double, world record with the four I like in the Travers the best. Corporate power, my long shot, Torpedo Anna, Doorknock, and Sierra Leone. No fierceness for me. I, I just don't expect him to win the Travers. Um, he could. He could, but uh, not at those odds for me. $10 exact a box in the Travers. I'm going with um, corporate power. I, I, the, too much value there for me to ignore. So I'm going to put corporate power on top with Torpedo, Anna, Doorknock, and Sierra Leone. And then I'm going to have those three, Torpedo, Anna, Doorknock, and Sierra Leone, over corporate power. So that's a $10 exacta key box. What do you think, Matt? Hey, Brian, I, I like the way you have uh, made wagers on your Long shots in here, looking for uh, a, a, a big price to come in and, and corporate power with that key box, not necessarily needing to win. So I, I, I like those kind of wagers. And don't don't tell, but you know I, I might make a smaller version of Zipsy's picks, uh, long shot picks on Travers Day, but but don't tell. Anyway. Uh, uh, also on closing, uh, you know, you hear me say it plenty of times. I will be at Saratoga, so if you're there, please say hello. But I get the exciting chance to be able to say both Brian and I will be at Saratoga on Saturday. I'm sure we'll be walking around. You'll have the opportunity to talk to both of us. So uh, see you on Saturday. 
Yeah, the odd couple uh, together again. It, it's not Jack Klugman or Tony Randall. It's it's Matt and I uh, at the Travers Weekend. So we look forward to seeing you out there at Saratoga for just a gigantic race and a gigantic weekend of racing. We want to thank you always for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and do it here at Horse Racing Nation on our, uh, the YouTube channel. Special thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics, Timeform US for those pace projections, and of course our sponsor, the best contest site out there, that's Derby Wars. Most of all, thanks and good luck. Good luck to all of you. We hope you hit it big on the Travers. We hope Matt and I were helpful in you hitting it big as well this weekend. We'll see you right here next week.